All right, let's be honest, GarageBand seems to have been built with the purpose of making it frustrating to use it so that you would feel the need to fork over the 200 bucks you need to upgrade to Logic. But at the same time, the sound content, so I'm talking loops, samples, instruments, that comes with GarageBand is taken straight from Logic and it does sound phenomenal. And so in today's video, I want to show you the three software instruments found in GarageBand that I think sound exceptionally good and I use them all the time, be it live with my band or my productions. And so, yeah, let's get right to it. So first off, when you create a new project, you will be prompted with this menu. So we're gonna choose software instrument, of course. And by default, it's gonna populate this track with a classic electric piano, which I guess sounds pretty good. But the first software instrument I wanna show you today is a vintage B3 Hammond organ. And there's a couple presets here. And the one that I think is absolutely outstanding is this heavy metal organ here. And so let me fetch my MIDI controller and I play you a little something here. So, you know, enough said, right? This is the most aggressive sounding Hammond emulation I have ever come across. And at the same time, with some of the more aggressive ones out there, the sound gets really harsh, especially if you play intervals that aren't perfect fifths. But with this one, I don't know how they did it, but they somehow managed to keep it sounding smooth and aggressive at the same time, which is quite remarkable. And as an added bonus, my modulation wheel here, if I move it, as you can see, it does have some effect. Not what I would expect, right? I would expect it to just add some vibrato, whereas here it's changing the drawbar configuration, which means it alters the character of the sound. So I guess if you move your wheel sort of quickly, it could sound like some sort of modulation, but still the important part is that this receives MIDI. Now obviously you cannot decide what MIDI CC controls which element, because that would be too convenient a workflow, but it does react to MIDI. So it just becomes a matter of throwing all sorts of CCs to it and seeing how it reacts, which if anybody has done that, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I think I might do that because I'm really curious. So there is some level of MIDI usability here, if that is even a word. Um, it's just, you just need to figure that out. And I'm gonna do it anyway, so you know, don't, don't, don't even bother doing that. I will probably post an update on this, letting you know what MIDI CC triggers what control here. But regardless, I think this sounds absolutely great right out of the box. You can customize it a bit, increase the distortion, add some reverb, make the sound a little more snappy. And of course, you can control the amount of rotary modulation speed. Right, so that is pretty cool. And that was the first sound. I use this with my band all the time. It sounds great live. It's just, it's just a classic Hammond sound. I mean, it's just perfect. <laughs> but yeah, uh, moving on, the next sound I want to show you today is a synth sound, a lead sound, and it's somewhere down here. Let's see. There we go. The Vox Box lead. I don't need to see these changes. This one I actually think can greatly benefit from an extra bit of processing, but first I want to let you hear what it sounds like without any of that. So, you know, classic formant lead kind of sound. And I was also using my modulation wheel to apply that sweet kind of sync like morphing to it. <laughs> but yeah, I think right out of the gate, it sounds a little bit too clean and digital. And so I went ahead and I added a bit of plugins after it and I actually saved all of that as a preset in my user patches here. Um, yeah, I call it Brutus or Brut, however that's pronounced. Um, Jordan Rudess or Rudess being obviously the keyboard player on Dream Theater and he's famous for these very spacey kind of solos. And so I think with a bit of further processing, this sound right here, the Voxbox lead, can be turned into something approximating what he uses on Dream Theater records. So yeah, let's see what I did here. I did add an instance of Amp Designer. So I went with this modern British stack with a dynamic microphone, placed dead center on the cone, just a little further back to reduce 
reduce the amount of bass. And then I used GarageBand's stock channel EQ to dial down a bit around 3.7k because with that amp distortion, I was getting some nasty resonances there. And then what do I have here? I have a gain plugin. Oh yeah, to convert the sound to mono because that's what I like to use live. But what I usually do in the studio, I would usually follow this up with a delay. And the reason why there is no delay here is because what I like to do is I like to do all of my MIDI work inside of Ableton, right? Because Ableton is much more advanced MIDI capabilities than GarageBand, obviously. Then send that MIDI straight into GarageBand to trigger the sounds. And then those sounds are streamed back into Ableton onto a separate audio track. And so basically, it's like I'm using GarageBand as a plugin inside of Ableton. And so I did have a delay on this, but it's inside of Ableton. So, you know, no major problem. I can just add one here. Let's just go with the take delay and uh, cut off the highs a little bit. Deviation. I assume offsets the left and the right channels a bit, so let's do some of that as well. And uh, let's see what that sounds like. So yeah, you get that kind of psychedelic, spacey lead, which uh, I think, you know, it obviously it doesn't sound exactly the same like what uh, Jordan, let's call him Jordan. Uh, what he uses, but it's kind of an approximation and I think it works well to get that same kind of vibe. So yeah, that was sound number two I wanted to show you today. And then moving on to sound number three, this might come as a bit of a surprise to some of you because I'm going to show you a drum kit. And usually when working with drums, I mean, when you get shown this, right, you would naturally gravitate towards the drummer track, right? But the problem, well, it's not the problem, it's just that this isn't meant to be used as a standard MIDI software instrument, right? This is a kind of system that Apple develops to allow you to have a drummer, even if you don't know the slightest thing about drums, right? You can just intuitively control the performance. You can use different drummers, make them louder, softer, simpler, more complex, accentuate certain elements of the kit as opposed to others. You know, just a series of intuitive controls so that you could have an automatically generated drum backing track. But that's not what we want to do, right? We want to do everything ourselves. And so let's get rid of this and let's actually go back here. And under drum kits, there are a slew of great sounding drums, but my favorite one so far is the South California kit. So let's load that. And now you can just trigger that with your MIDI controller. Now, obviously some drum pads would be ideal for this, maybe even an electronic drum kit, but for the purposes of this video, my keyboard here is gonna have to do. Sounds great, sounds natural, there's dynamics there, but at the same time, it sounds very polished as well. Like this is what I would want my drum recording to sound like when I'm done mixing. Natural, human, but polished. At the same time, you have a couple extra controls here and uh, I did customize these and I saved them as a preset. So let's have a look at that. So I called it aggressive because I just used this recently actually on a video which you can check out somewhere here. So it's kind of a dark synth industrial kind of track. And I took away the electronic drums and I just jammed a bit. So I tried to get a very aggressive kind of stadium rock sound. And to get there, I did lower the cymbals quite a bit. They sound great, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's just the kind of sound that will stick out in the mix and overpower the rest of the drums. But even if you turn them down, you will still hear them. <laughs> Trust me. And then I did remove a bit of the hi-hat as well. Same thing there. Then I compress the sound a bit to make it even more aggressive. And then it seems like I added some groove too. So let's hear what that sounds like. So yeah, um, you still retain those dynamics, that natural kind of human-like sound, but at the same time, it's very aggressive. So it works well, I would say, for rock productions, even into metal. And so yeah, that was it. As you can see, there's loads of sounds here. I mean, there's orchestral stuff too, and I haven't explored all of them. So chances are that I might do another video like this in the future, showcasing another three presets that I have found myself using. Definitely, I could see myself using bass 
bass sounds because I do not actually own an electric bass. If I should ever need that kind of sound in the future, this is where I would start looking for that. But also the orchestral stuff sounds very enticing and, you know, it's just, just way too much. <laughs> for a free piece of software that most people don't even consider worthy of being looked at, I think there's way too much good stuff. All right, so those were the three best sounds in GarageBand that I have found so far, and I use them all the time. So I hope this was helpful to you. If so, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment, maybe even hit that notification bell so that you actually get notified whenever I put out a new video. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video next week. Take care.